In our previous episode of Market Journal, we discussed the precautions producers need to take before allowing livestock to graze fields with downed corn. This week, we'll look at the nutrition needs of cows when they're on corn stalks. University of Nebraska-Lincoln research shows utilizing open fields can be economically beneficial for beef cow producers. Nebraska Extension cow-calf specialist Carla Jenkins joined us earlier this week from the Panhandle to discuss the nutrient requirements of those grazing animals. We started our conversation by asking for a review of how producers can determine the amount of residue in a field. There is about 16 pounds of dry matter of residue for every bushel of corn that per acre that was um, produced. And so about half of that residue is actually available to cattle because they're gonna trample some and um, you're gonna lose some. And so really, if you had a 200 bushel per acre field, um, then you take that times the eight pounds, you've probably got about 1,600 pounds of dry matter residue available for the animal. And so if you estimate a mature cow eating about 26 pounds of that per day, uh, then you can kind of estimate about how many days she would be able to use that or how many cows per acre you would be able to put out there. And so those are ballparks that you can start with and obviously you have to watch the condition of the cows and that sort of thing. But that gives you a ballpark starting point of how many you could run um, depending on the yield of the corn. What are the nutrient requirements first for late summer or fall calving cows? Well, if you're taking pears out to the stalks, which a lot of times people are, if the cow is giving birth in late summer or fall, then she's taking that calf with her out to stalks. And so, um, number one, her needs are pretty high because of lactation. Lactation um, requires quite a bit more energy than just a dry gestating cow, almost twice. And so she's gonna require just for herself about um, 16, 17 pounds of TDN per day that she needs to consume out there. Um, and then the calf is going to start eating feed very quickly as well. It's not just on a milk diet. So you have to account for how much they're gonna eat, but also the nutrient quality of that. And so if that cow is eating, um, let's say 28 pounds of, of dry matter out there, and it's only 50% TDN because it is husk and leaves and you know just the residue. That's actually only giving her about 14 pounds and she's short because she may need 16, 17. So um, in research studies that we have done, we've been able to maintain those fall calving pairs on corn stalk residue, a nice available field, plenty of residue available, uh, plus about five pounds of distiller's grains per day per pair. Would those pregnant cows have a different nutrient requirement then? So a pregnant cow that's not got her calf with her, so she's had the requirements of lactation removed, she's dry, she's just pregnant, she's just waiting out the winter. Her energy requirements are about half that, so she may be down to only needing eight to 10 pounds um, of TDN per day, and that could easily be met out there on those residue fields. It's pretty debatable whether she actually needs a protein supplement out there or not. Research at the University of Nebraska would suggest that providing her a protein supplement will certainly increase her body condition out there and make her look nicer out there, but um, after she had the calf that she was carrying and went to rebreed with the second calf, she didn't actually rebreed any better or wean a, a bigger calf than the cows that didn't receive any supplement. So producers need to certainly keep cows in good condition while they're out there, but they need to be cognizant of her needs because there's also no reason to spend extra money on supplement if she doesn't need it. You've also done some research looking at the profitability of cows grazing stocks versus dry lotting. Tell me quickly what that looks like. So, the calves coming off the corn stalks didn't weigh as much as the calves on in the confinement and that can throw producers off a little bit because we always want that bigger weaning weight. But the cost of maintaining those pairs, even though we were limit feeding the cows in confinement was higher than what we were able to rent those corn stalks for. So the net profitability of running those fall pairs on corn stalks was actually better than the cows in confinement even though the cows in confinement had a better condition score um, than the cows on corn stalks and their calves weighed heavier. Once you did all the economics to that, the cows on corn stalks actually made you a little more money. 